Hello, and thank you for listening. My name is Luke Mardigan, the owner of the Mardigan Insurance Agency in St. John's, Michigan, and you are listening to Be Insured, where we talk about business leadership and insurance that way on your worst day. When you need it the most, you will be insured. We've been talking to a fellow business owner, Dan Romai, owner of Redemption Fitness, about balancing the tension between innovation and stability. During this crazy COVID time with a lot of uncertainty around revenue, uh, it's, it's a serious temptation to innovate so that you make yourself different than everybody else. I actually listened to this whole podcast on this restaurant that innovated and they became like a college basically I'm like, well, that's not innovation. But anyways, um, <laughs> so do you want, to, are you supposed to innovate during this time or are you supposed to be stable? Well, we made the argument last episode that in today's world, innovation is stability because it's so hard to bring stability in this chaotic environment that we're in. And so we're going to talk more about that and about how Dan grew his business in the midst of government shutdowns by being a stable, consistent business. Dan, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. Yeah, of course. And as always, I'm excited to be joined by my awesome co-host. Eric Gastring, the Morgan Agency. Dan, do you feel like you've discovered a good balance between innovation and stability? Um, and what does that look like for you? Because, you know, you own a gym. It's not a, a bro sesh gym with... with uh, Curl racks. I mean, squat racks. Do you have the long cat alarm? No, <laughs> it's not, not anymore. It's a functional fitness gym where normal human beings can go and get healthier. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So one of the big things that we innovated reopening, um, which has created a large amount of stability inside of our business is implementing a, a program called the level method. Um, and so what that does, and you, Luke, you and I have talked yes. briefly about this. Um, basically, like it, it's very similar to like martial arts, right? So every martial arts dojo, yeah, like the belt, yeah, exactly. So you have you know white belt, black belt, all that stuff. So we have eight different colored belts that you could potentially be in the gym. Um, levels is what we yeah. call them, um, and then you progress through 15 assessments and over the course of the assessments you get your overall level and so that would be your belt rank like i have my wristband on which is my black level which is what i am because you're super fit because i'm moderately this fit is actually sometimes. pretty ingenious uh, innovation dude it's, it's legit like so okay so this company's been around for like four years and i've every time i ask anyone like what do you guys do for programming in your gym someone says level method and i'm like all right fine i'll check this out finally so i got on a discovery call with him and i was like take my money like literally where have you been for the last 10 years of my business well because traditional gyms it's uh, programming is more trying to trying to be innovative it's like this how can we put our own flavor and twist yeah because pr programming is basically what workouts you do when and what order and for yeah. how long the workouts the are capacity, and, all that and, stuff, and, right. and then usually most gyms will will publish a like uh, an rx as prescribed right. which means it's like you know a high level of fitness right. versus a um, modified version where maybe if you have an old lower back injury, you yep. can do this exercise instead, but it's going to get you the similar heart rate and, yeah. and duration and intensity. So two things that level method has done for us, which has increased the um, the like length that people stay at our gym, our lifetime value, that's what I was going for. That's increased the lifetime value is uh, number one, it's removed the word scaled or modified from the business, um, which... If you're if you are a quote unquote traditionally scaled athlete, um, you might not think anything of that. But when someone says, "All right, this is RX," and if you need to scale that, it immediately implies that you're lesser than the people right. doing RX. Yeah. And so now it's hey, you don't like if you're doing brown, this is what you're doing. If you're doing yellow today, this is what you're doing. And yellow is like five levels under brown. Very different person, like a completely different human, but they're both going to feel the same way when the workouts, they're both going to be done in three minutes or 10 minutes or whatever the goal is. They're both going to get five rounds. Like the stimulus we're going for is the same. Um, yeah. And, that's and, super and, cool. And so that, yeah, it's crazy. That brings, so that is an innovative thing that you brought in that brings stability because yeah. people know where they're at on the scale. Right. Right. And, and I think from, from a fitness perspective, like I recently went back to just traditional bodybuilding workouts. Like I'm not doing any like CrossFit tell. high intensity stuff. Jack. Hey, thanks buddy. <laughs> I'm trying to get skinny, but um, you brought me a large shirt and made me feel skinny. Um, um, You're welcome. The uh, you, you know, but when I go do like bro sesh, I have I still need programming. I get it from my nutrition coach, but I don't know if like what I'm doing is good or not. Right. Like I really don't. Like I don't know if I should be pushing myself a little harder or not. I, like I've trained enough. You know, you and I met competing in CrossFit. Yeah, I've trained enough that I kind of know if I'm actually like 
near my like where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. But I don't really know. And I can't compare myself to like the the steroid out dude down, you know, four squat racks. <laughs> Three down machines over, right. Who's who's just like massive and can't tie his shoes, right? And I can't compare myself to the eighteen year old who just graduated high school who's coming in doing curls for spring break. Like I can't measure myself. But your system has brought uh, the level system yep. that you've brought into your gym has helped people know where they're at, which brings more stability to their yeah. mindset. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And the really cool thing is, like I said, like it, it allows, you know, Eric, you could walk in, do your, your 15 assessments and work out next to, you know, a 350 pound lady who's just getting off the couch for the first time and somebody who's going to compete with us this weekend in Texas. And you all could do the same workout and get very similar results, which is, Something that I've never seen inside of a CrossFit gym until I started look, like researching levels. Well, that's like what it's all about, right? It's right. just health. Well, I mean, yeah. why you have to start somewhere. Yeah. Not everybody's going to be in the same place right. ever. Right. So, well, and that's the thing that I always tell people. They're like, oh, I got to get in shape before I come and start working out with you guys. I'm like, no, no, you don't. Like, if I can get you on, we call it the map. It's like the big board in the gym. You, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But um, <laughs> it starts at white, and then white one is the second level. So if I can get you on there at all, you can come mm-hmm. because now, now we have a level that you now, can do. I, I like to get in shape while I'm getting in shape. That's same, my favorite yeah, type same, of way right? to get in shape. <laughs> For real. Um, <laughs> so when we talk about innovation, so in the, in the COVID pandemic, we talked to the last episode about uh, how you've been, you were shut down. You were shut yep. down for months yeah. with no mm-hmm. sign. You, you had cops showing up to your door telling you that you couldn't be working out. It's, you know, it, my favorite t-shirt now is a t-shirt you gave me, which says exercises. Not a crime. Not a crime. Yep. And, Still uh, not. In yeah. case you were wondering. And, and uh, you know, just, it, it just crazy stuff. Like out of this world, mind boggling. No one ever thought in America we'd have exercising is a crime, right? right? Working out with your friends is a crime, right? But you had to deal with that. And so rather than innovate, which, you know, like I said, there's, you know, I heard this hour long podcast of this restaurant out in Washington who literally like became a college and just like crazy stuff like that. Rather than, rather than becoming something different, you kind of doubled down on your current model and, you know, it, let's compare and contrast that. Okay. So a lot of businesses have been trying to generate revenue from other sources like that restaurant who became a college. Like, you know, hey, well, we can't sell food, so let's... Let's do t-shirts. Let's do uh, supplements. And, let's and, do... And and they move... Away, by innovating, they actually move away from their core competency. And that's right. that's my main argument here, guys, is, is if you're a business owner or you're a small business or um, you work in a small business, it's, it's not innovating to the point where you sacrifice your core competencies and actually become something that nobody knows what it is. Right. There's another gym here in town who they decided to innovate by charging their members to rent equipment. Am right. I right? Yes. And then having them continue, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but I'm pretty sure. So timeline to my knowledge and what I've been told is increase of membership pricing Two months later, COVID shuts down. Continue paying that new increased price membership. Even though that their doors aren't open. Even though you can't come here. And on top of that, rent this equipment from me. Um, and so that worked until it didn't. Um, and then when it no longer did. Um, oh, that's, that's the take, take, take. Not yeah, so well, and that, and that was for them probably thinking, gosh, we could, let's be innovative. We could, since nobody can go out and buy barbells because they all sold out the third yeah. week in March. We'll rent equipment. We'll rent our equipment out to people since it's just sitting here. And, and they, I mean, which I'm, makes sense right, if, if you're not a member already. Like, that's yes. the thing. Like, so I had people re- from that gym reach out to me, hey, can I borrow a bar? I'm like, yeah. Take the bar. Like, here, yeah. you can have it. Like, You're it's like, literally yeah, collecting I have, dust. I have 30 of them, right? Like, yeah, it's it's, it's becoming yeah. uh, a worse barbell not being used, so take it. You're actually doing me a favor. And that person and his wife joined the gym about three months later. Um, right. Along with about 30, now nah, about 20 other people from that business that closed permanently. And, and that's really core to who you've been. You've always been more of a family gym. Yeah. There's families that go to your gym. When I went there, like it was, you know, when you first started, it was your family. It was like Josh and like, you know what Literally, I mean? Literally, like, yeah. Well, yeah. That's, that's the difference of, with having ethics and morals as a business owner. I think people and, and are And being relationship be, based yeah. and, not, and not transactional, you know, and that other gym, which I, I imagine that their um, overall revenue over the past 10 years is just ex- extraordinarily more than yours. Yeah, for sure. Oh, definitely. They're much, but, much, but, much bigger gym. But, but who's open today? Right. And so you keep talking about Simon Sinek. So I don't know if you've read his <laughs> his book, The Infinite Game. Of course I have. Okay. So it's, it's like our playbook. Yeah. So I, um, when I was with my first business coach, the one that tried to get me to do the online stuff that we talked about, he- That you start, do. That we start, yeah, that we're doing <laughs> a, a different version, but yeah. yeah. Um, so w- we- he started talking about the infinite game and I got like really nerded out on it. And it's like, okay, like 
you're trying to like they would always say oh we're the we're the best gym in town like we're the the crossfit gym for lansing and and like i have no ill will towards them at all oh, yeah. super great, clear great, but great dudes yeah but gals. the thing is like you're the best at what like you keep saying you're winning like you, we have the most members like wh- i don't care like right. I can pay my bills. My business is open. Like who? So well, like well, if we're well, looking well, at it as winning, like winning is just continuing to play. Right. And so we're still open. We're still playing the game. So like who's win? Who, right. who who's win? That's not a real sentence. Who is winning? I guess like well, well, like you know like the the classic uh, what movie were you just watching? I think it was it was Simpsons. There's like this black hole that everything got sucked into, and they met this alien creatures where this all the stuff was going, and they're like our our favorite electronic is the Zune. Right, and I think he uses. I think Simon Sinek uses a Zune in he does. He Infinite talks Game. About that with, uh, in contrast How it failed. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you have or the iPod, or the iPod. Yeah, you have the Something, iPods, yeah. and then Microsoft Zune, which my mom had a Microsoft Zune. Funny enough, I literally don't even know what that is. To be honest, it's, I do. <laughs> it's an, it's, it's an, like an iPod. It's an MP3 player. Yeah. Basically, they were able to hold more songs, and it costs less than the iPod. But they so, didn't market it well. No, right. no, well, it wasn't even the marketing. It's just even the design. Like they, they never thought about the end user. Okay, like their reason for doing it was because my because uh, Apple was doing it. So my Microsoft is just like we're just gonna we're gonna do it too, and it didn't work. Well, in the in the same now it's a pop culture reference on The Simpsons, right? Like what yeah. isn't though? Um, in the same way, like you, you know, for you, your the game you were playing was never who could have the most revenue over ten years. Right. It was how many people can you help and still be profitable. Right. 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 Like, and there's seasons where you weren't profitable, yeah. but you were able to pay your bills and you know, you're able to continue it so that you could show up for the next well, person who wanted to get in shape. Yeah. And the thing, the crazy thing is like, okay, so I was looking at our end of year numbers and like, we're down 49 and a half percent from 2019 Whoa. to 2020, but we're open. We have a better facility. We have the same amount of staff. Um, we have about the same amount of members now, but we took a huge hit. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, like, if you look at total dollars coming into the business, you'd be like, okay, that's definitely not going to make it. But, like, we're, like, we, in my opinion, like, our culture inside of the gym, like, we have some stuff that we're working through right now as a staff, which I'm happy to talk about that. But, like, it's all good things right now. But, like, we are continuing to service our members. Are we bringing in less dollars? Yes. Are we pushing out less things for, like, different things that we just didn't need? Like, we cut a ton of unnecessary expenses. Like that's what you have to do in, yep. when something like this happens. But that's part of the innovation is like, where can I cut? Right. It, rather than innovation and in product or service yeah. offered. Right. I mean, that's the same with us. We we, we were down um, uh, 19 to 20, about 15%. Okay. Some of that was strategic, but you can, you can tell, uh, just walk into one of our team meetings. Everybody is psychologically in a better place than they were in 19. And that's what's important. Right. So we have a healthier team. We have a healthier relationships with our clients. And we have a more consistent process that we take our clients through, whether it's for service or if they're coming on board for the first time. Yeah. So which we has never existed. refocus pretty much on our stability. Right. So now, because this is what we are happening, right? So we'd be innovative. We'd go out and we'd get a bunch of business. We'd bring it in. And then three months later, we'd have some issue, like whatever it is. And this, and this is a small percent. But, you know, in business, if you have any issues, like they feel like everything. It feels like a nightmare, right? But, but really, I think these things just point out your inefficiencies is what it is. And so well, it did. if it's true of one account, it probably is true of others. And they just didn't have issues. Yeah. For whatever, or you know, they didn't got, want to tell you. Or you got lucky, yeah. you know, just or you, or somebody knew how to deal with it and another person didn't. Right. right? Or whatever the story is, but it's an inefficiency, right? Yeah. So rather than do all of that, um, we realized that by building consistency in our processes, we are actually preventing issues down the road, which was cementing our clients' faith in us. Yeah. It was so easy to move over and I had no issues and I haven't even had to talk to them because everything's done right and my right. billing's straight and everything's great. My life is, I will call them yeah. to pick up the phone because we're not inundated with all those crappy problems we had. And so for <laughs> you, like, you know, our people aren't tied up with two hours on the phone with billing to try to fix some silly issue that if we had just done it, uh, the right, same way the as all the time. other ones, yeah. then it would have been fine, right? Well, for you on the innovation side, like rather than um, trying to push new products, you actually have streamlined your process so that it's actually easier and everybody goes through the same process right. as a member, right? Yeah. And even your online coaching, even though it's an innovation that you're doing this remote coaching in a different way, you're using the same system. Yeah, it's the exact same system. Um, the only difference is they get a coaching call instead of just having the stuff like, and just doing it on their own. Right. Um, and so it's obviously more that way. But, um, you know, part of that is like the innovation of that is like, okay, I have this new, new, we'll call it quote unquote new coaching business that um, 
is definitely pulling some attention away from the gym. And so how do I fix that? And so we've like actually being down 50% almost like we are now, we have two people in place as managers, like taking roles in the business. And it's funny because I was actually at um, the church and there, he was talking about something in Acts and he mentioned Exodus 18, which um, Moses is basically standing there just getting rattled by people all day long about all the things that they have complaints about. Yeah. And he's like, his stepdad, he's like, this is inefficient. What are you doing? Like, you need to raise up other men. Yep. And so essentially what we did and I, like that day, I was like, all right, I'm going to hire, it, figure it, out these two people to be manager so roles. Hiring in those positions, building in systems of consistency, whether mm-hmm. online or in person. Yeah. Now you are a more stable business. For sure. In the midst of chaos, Redemption Fitness, people know what to expect from you. Yeah, and, I, I would say yes. And that's why my argument is in this COVID environment, stability, stability over is, innovation. is innovation because it's so yeah. hard. So thank you for joining us. I'm being sure. Dan, thanks so much for being on. Check out Dan at Redemption Fitness in Holt, Michigan. And we'll see you next time on Be Insured.